Hi and welcome. Well, thank you for having me. Please introduce yourself. Uh, my name is Giles Yeo. I'm at the University of Cambridge and I'm a geneticist that studies obesity. Given your area of expertise in obesity, um, we're trying to understand if obesity is a choice. What's the science around this question? I think the first thing is that we have to understand that in order to gain weight, in order to become obese, you need to eat more than you, than you burn. It's, it's the physics. Eat less, move more. And I know you're going, you got this guy to come up and do this interview for that. But it's true because it's physics and we can't get around that. But that being said, that's the how you actually gain weight and how you lose weight. But why? Why do people behave differently around food? And the moment you start to unpick that, then you realize everyone behaves differently around food. And now we understand that this difference in behavior, being more attracted towards food, how you actually react to the food, there's huge biological variability, and there's actually a lot of genetics that's actually involved. And put simplistically, we now know of over, over 300 genes, actually, that play a role largely within the brain that influences our um, approach and our attraction towards food. Put simply, obesity is not a choice. Now it's a choice, I'm choosing to put the cookie in my mouth. But it's not a choice because some people find it more difficult to say no. And if it's more difficult to say no, over a lifetime, you people are going to be in different sizes. If it's more difficult to say no, it is not a choice. And you think those choices are genetically determined? Determined is a strong word. I think they're genetically influenced. Clearly, there's going to be cultural, social, you know, and whatever, what mental state you're in, etc., etc. Are you stressed? Um, but definitely, your genes are going to influence our interaction and our behavior around food. And are there specific genetic subtypes that you look out for? Um, well, we would like to, I mean, so, but at the moment we don't have that level of granularity, I think, because, because uh, we don't know enough of the biology. We just know um, um, that these genes are there. In fact, for the vast majority of the genes, we don't even know what they do. But we know that they actually influence um, feeding behavior. And so the key question now is, are we able to predict feeding behavior based on these genes? Now that is the big question. And I don't think there are a lot of companies out there, I'm not going to mention their names, I don't want to be sued, um, um, who claim to be able to, to, to predict your feeding behavior or what you should do, yeah, you know what, we're not there yet. At some point, maybe, but we're not there yet. So what's the truth about dieting? The truth, um, <laughs> look, I think, I think people say my diets don't work. My di your diet doesn't work because you come off the diet, okay? So di any diet that gets you to eat less is a diet that works, okay? Because then you can actually lose weight. The issue is it's a two-stage two thing, right? You've got to be able to lose the weight, then you've got to be able to keep the weight off, okay? And, and the, the second is actually more difficult than the first. And I guess if you do, if you want to keep the weight off, you've got to have a lifestyle change because the moment you come off the diet, the weight's going to come back on, which means that you can't do anything extreme. You have to do it gradually. You've got to do it sensibly for you to be able to keep the weight off. And you've got to do you you got to you it like sound like a fortune cookie but but you know but uh, you know everyone has a different strokes of different folks you got to you got to do you so what would what are your recommendations for practicing clinicians in dealing with their patients obesity okay i think the the, the biggest message to be put out there is have a huge distinction i have a huge distinction between pointing out the problem which there is and blaming the person suffering from the problem. Okay, so I think you've got to you got to you got to pull that apart in your head. So the moment you have that, then you know, okay, Mrs. Smith has a problem. Empathize with Mrs. Smith. You know, find out why it's she's finding it difficult not to be able to follow some of the rules, to, to, to eat less, to do whatever she's got to do. And then if you understand that and understand that different people find it more difficult than others, the empathy will actually help you motivate her or him, pardon me, in order to in order to lose weight. But don't blame the person suffering from the problem. Thank you so much for your insights. You're very welcome.